I did see there was an official coronation playlist that was going. Oh, really? The first one was Daddy Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I was really cracking up. Like, mm. Is that what he's going to be walking down the aisle to to get? That would be quite funny. It was. <laughs> Welcome to the Sherlock's Team Podcast with me, Heather Steele. Today I'm joined by Harriet Russell and Emma Bigger. Hi girls. Hello. How are you all doing? Good. Good. It's the afternoon, we usually do it in the morning and I've had a caffeinated drink, which isn't. I don't usually have one in the afternoon. Do so. you not? No. How I do have you squeeze in your eight cups or whatever it is? Between 6am and yeah, sort of 1pm. Bloody hell. Yeah, really? But Tor assures me it's a healthy Red Bull, apparently. Oh. So uh, apologies if I'm sort of... <laughs> No, I love it. No, I, I should have done the same, actually. I haven't had a coffee <laughs> since this morning, and I usually have about 10 by now, so... <laughs> we can power through. Yeah. We've got this, we've got this. Harriet, what have you been up to since we last on the podcast? Well, it's been bank holiday weekend, yeah. hasn't it? Although the weather was not up to much, as per usual. No, it was rubbish. Um, I yeah. think where I was, it was really, really sunny. Where were you? Norfolk. Oh, so yeah, we sun. had like really nice day like, because <laughs> we weren't expecting it. So, yeah, but it was such a nice surprise. I, I think down here it was just patchy, wasn't it? Yeah. So Saturday was like I caught the sun a bit on Saturday. Actually, Did you? yeah, we've okay. got some new freckles anyway, but only for like an hour period. And then yeah. the rest was Saturday. Mm, actually, I was in I was in central London and I was walking around a bit um, for lunch, and then we went to the theatre in the afternoon. And yeah, it was actually really nice. But then Sunday was just really changeable, and I went to this um, like gardening show. Oh, fun! Where yeah. Was that? So I went to the Gardener's World Spring Fair, oh. which is hosted down in Bewley, which oh, nice. near Brockenhurst yeah. in the New Forest. Um, it's actually a really cool setting. It's at the Motor Museum there, which I think if you have kids, like they'd absolutely love that. It's got everything. Hasn't yeah, it? it's really it's a really good museum. No one ever talks about it. Um, but they also have extensive sort of like fields and grounds and stuff so they set up this sort of exhibition show in there so that was really fun but the weather was like really iffy all day so there was a lot of sheltering in marquees (laughs) under like torrential downfalls and stuff um and then monday yeah i was just sort of chilling at home which meant the weather was not so much of a disruptive Mm. element but yeah it was still not the greatest day what did you see at the theater on saturday we went to see this play called jules et jim which is a french like noir from 1966 62 i think the film came out um but it's a play originally and yeah they've put it on at the german street theater oh, cool. which i really really rate if you're in into theater slash not really mm. and you want to go more but you w- don't want to be paying like mm. national prices yeah. where it's just gone absolutely ridiculous mm. or west end as well as yeah. you were saying um a few weeks ago then german street is such a good shout because i think we paid I think I paid 26 and the person I went with paid 22 because they were on concession. Yeah. Um, and the acting is so supreme. So the it was a three-hander and one of them, um, I forget the actress's name, but she plays Orla in Sex Education. She is brilliant in it. So I'd highly recommend, like you end up seeing some really major stars mm. there that go super under the radar. Um, so yeah, if you want to go more, but you don't want to pay horrendous prices, yeah. I really recommend it. Ooh, amazing. Yeah. I'm actually seeing the Layman Trilogy oh, tomorrow yeah. night, but I managed to snag some £20 tickets. Oh, well done. I only bought them the, a couple of days ago, but I think it's just because it's coming to the end of its run and mm. there were two sort of not great not tickets great. at the back, but I really meant to see it. And you know when it, you suddenly remember in your head like, oh crap, that's finishing in a couple mm. of weeks. So yeah. So where's it on now? So it's part of the National Theatre, but it's at the Gillian Lynn Theatre mm-hmm. on Drury Lane. But yeah, it's three hours 20 with mm-hmm. two intervals. But no, I'm up for it. I went to see it through National Theatre Live in the cinema. Of course. Way yeah. back when. But yeah, even that was brilliant. Yeah. So I'm sure live it's even better. Oh, no, mm-hmm. I'm excited. I'll report back yeah. next week on the podcast. I'll be interested yeah. to see what you think. Exciting. Emma, how about you? You're in Norfolk. Right? Uh, I was in Norfolk, so I had a very chilled weekend we did lots of week walks on the beach and pub lunches nice. and yeah just catching up with some friends that we know there and yeah the kids just running around so it's really nice oh, nice to get like... some fresh air and yeah that get out of like London. an ideal bank holiday yeah actually. yeah it was actually it was really yeah. lovely you nice. also traveled though didn't you heather i did so yeah i actually went to Alderney this weekend in the channel islands so oh, i was originally oh. meant to go in i think it was october got to the airport Southampton airport and I was going on a press trip with some other journalists and we sort of hanging around for ages and unfortunately the flights all got cancelled so we oh, couldn't no. go 
but I got an opportunity to go again this last weekend. Mm. Again, they basically they do a few flights a day, but they're in tiny. I think they're only like eighteen seater planes because it's only a twenty five minute uh, sort of journey over the channel. But managed to get on one finally on Saturday. Got there and yeah, had a really really lovely weekend. What so, did you get up to? What? So I was only there for about 24 hours, 26 hours, I think, in the end. But it feels, it's basically such a small island. It's the smaller, it's not the smallest ones, but it's smaller than Jersey and Guernsey. I think it's three miles long and a mile and a half wide. Oh my goodness. So, yeah, fairly small. But, um, yeah, we hired some e-bikes and went all the way around the nice. island. Went on a tour with a really nice guy called Roland who looks after Wildlife Alderney. And he was showing us all the different oh, wildlife cool. spots there. They've got... A huge colony of gannets which I hadn't necessarily thought were very interesting birds but now I'm like yep yeah, <laughs> and you can see puffins as well we didn't actually go but you can go on a boat tour and there's Aww. this rock that you can see where all these puffins are yeah. and what's the food scene down there like so yeah it's kind of as you'd expect because it's an island it's like got good seafood yeah. stuff so yeah there's a good sort of chippy that we went to and had fish cakes and they've got a few nice little restaurants and cafes but then they've got this hotel that I think it opened just before the pandemic and then obviously had fun and games during uh, mm. the first year or two but it's called the Blonde Hedgehog and it's a sort of hotel and it's got a really nice restaurant as well mm. so we did a lot of our eating there but really really lovely place but we did actually see a blonde hedgehog so there's these particular hedgehog that live there that are blonde but yeah Roland told us where to go find them so at like half ten on <laughs> You're Saturday out there with your binoculars. yeah we, well we basically we we'd had dinner and then went back and I just sort of did shove some leggings on under my dress and put a barber on but he told us where to go so yeah we just went and yeah it was right was there. it really exciting when it you was found actually, it yeah because yeah. you're also like worried because you're like I hope we don't trample on yeah. it yeah you, you obviously don't because it's pitch black I mean the stars and sky yeah, are amazing yeah and then we saw one he was like yeah just use your phone torches but don't like flash it at them okay so we didn't obviously didn't want to blind the poor things but no, yeah, we saw <laughs> two things. so yeah that was an exciting little diversion yeah would really recommend it it was really sunny on the saturday i was worried on sunday we wouldn't get off the island because it was foggy again but oh, we were no. fine <laughs> yeah, yeah it was really really nice but i'd recommend yeah the blonde hedgehog was really really yeah. good and is there enough there to fill a weekend or would yeah, you sure. recommend cruising other I, islands well i don't know because i haven't actually done any of the other channel islands so mm. i wouldn't like to say but um yeah you can also fly to guernsey and get a ferry ride over so i imagine okay. you could do a mm. day trip but yeah, you could easily spend a long weekend there. And I think, actually, if you had kids, you could spend even longer because there are all these amazing beaches. Mm. So you could easily just go and just go to a different beach each day with the kids. And it sounds lovely. It's yeah. like somewhere that you might not necessarily exactly. think of going. Have you guys been watching anything or reading anything? Um, I watched the um, Lewis Capaldi documentary. Oh, Have you seen no, it? Mm. tell me about it. I was interested by yeah, it. Yeah, it was... Um, I mean, I'm not like his biggest number one fan but I just thought it sounded quite interesting because yeah. it kind of follows him and his sudden rise to fame yeah. and obviously his mental health issues but it it was just a really like honest portrayal of him and I just thought it was great that you know he's flagged up such a you know all about his mental health even though he's like this you know mega superstar it's just it's just really good to see the other side mm. and you know it's not all kind of you know, parties and money and glamour. And so, yeah, I'd really recommend it, actually. He came across well. He, com he came across, like, really funny and That's what charismatic. I think and, of him as, yeah. Cause, uh, yeah, I don't listen to his music by choice, but I think he's got a really good voice, and, you know, yeah. when it's on the radio, I'm not like, oh, turn that yeah. off or anything. <laughs> but it's mainly, on Twitter, he is so funny. He is, he funny, is funny, yeah. And look at all the billboards he's done for, like, his stuff, where he's just wearing, like, a pair of, like, baggy pants and yeah. pretending to be Beyonce and stuff. I like Yeah, because he's so at odds with... <laughs> the music industry yeah. and you know what they try and represent yeah. and I, I just really like him for that yeah and he does mm. come across like that yeah sort of yeah he does yeah oh, amazing. and then just you know just kind of I guess increasing awareness on Tourette's and mm. yeah because I was going to say he's he was only diagnosed with that a couple of years ago wasn't he I yeah don't think he even realized until he'd seen footage of yeah I think I think he'd always had anxiety mm. and then he developed this tick, which then obviously got diagnosed as Tourette's. But um, yeah, it's very, it's very interesting. And I think, you know, his sense of humour, even through all that, mental, you know, he still yeah. has his sense of humour that kind of helps him navigate through his problems. Mm. So, but yeah, it's very Does good. he talk in the documentary about having to stop touring and stuff? Because I think that's been a headline, hasn't it? That yeah, because he 
gets yeah. much worse, he he might not be able to make it through songs. But then his fans in the live gigs where mm. the Tourette's has kicked up have been overwhelmingly over. yeah. supportive. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, that's quite moving. Actually, yeah. I don't know if you saw that when he was really struggling, and mm. then the whole oh. concert just you know kept singing. And I know. it was really moving. Yeah, I bet. I haven't seen um, that. Oh, you should definitely. I, I think you can watch it on YouTube. Yeah, and, yeah, it's really sweet to watch yeah. but i think he has been quite candid about the fact yeah. that he wouldn't feel mm. confident i guess enough to go out on tour and continue yeah. doing these big sets if he knew, if he was worried about getting through because i guess i don't know enough about Tourette's mm. but i wonder if stress yeah. and anxiety mm. must play a part in making it worse I'm or better sure. yeah. yes yeah. yeah i mean i'm i yeah i think i think you're right there but um i think you know you just don't really see like the, the amount of pressure because he had that massive pit i don't yeah. even know the names i could sing it someone you yeah, to. yeah that's like it. That. <laughs> yeah. and then it was the pressure on him to you know recreate another massive yeah. hit and like you just don't think about people like musicians yeah. and that that pressure just must be so huge mm. people always say that about the second album don't yeah they? if someone's done amazingly well on their first album like the absolute pressure to follow it yeah up with something just as good and then pleasing all the music make people break yeah, up can't exactly. it mm. yeah yeah as much as so, you're yeah. a solo artist taking well i know you've got a team behind you but it is sort of your mm. name out there i imagine that's extra stressful yeah yeah but yeah definitely worth a watch that's on netflix isn't it that's on netflix yeah, yeah. amazing yeah. harriet I don't know about watching because I feel like my entire life is taken up by Succession and Ted Lasso in like alternate say, kind of yeah, instalments. Watching that, I finished Beef, I finished Yellowstone. Yeah, it's like, yeah. what do we watch now? <laughs> but I listened to an interesting podcast this week. So I'm already a fan of Carol Walton's My Life in Jewelry podcast where she she has some amazing episodes where it sounds a bit niche. Like she is the, um, or she was, I should say, the sort of head jewelry editor at Vogue for many, many years and Tatler before that. And in a way, she has tried her best to make jewellery as kind of um, relevant as we talk about fashion. And her sort of like belief, which I think is so interesting, is if you inherited clothes from 1800, you probably wouldn't wear them. Mm. But if you inherited jewellery from 1800, you may well still. Mm -hmm. And it sort of has this enduring quality and it teaches us a lot about history Mm -hmm. and the past and all of this. And she had an episode this week with Susie Menkes, who obviously is a very esteemed fashion journalist and they were talking about all the royal coronation jewels and basically what's been worn over the years and what might not be worn this time because controversies have kind of arisen Mm, yeah is it one of camilla's crowns that she could wear it's got that that jewel that everybody yeah the court i can't remember the full name of it but it's it's that diamond isn't it that's really controversial and then really belong to the british there was a theory that she might wear a a coronet that queen victoria wore um to a lot of state occasions but and there's debate over whether the sapphire in it is belong to Edward the Confessor like that's how old it is and whether that's appropriate so they go through basically the whole of the royal collection oh, wow. and what may or may not make an appearance on Saturday we're recording this on Tuesday, Tuesday. Yeah, it was a bank holiday <laughs> and it was a bank holiday so, um, so yeah we'll have to wait and see what kind of comes out but she yeah she has these Susie Menkes has written a book on the subject which is why she's being interviewed and she has these amazingly interesting anecdotes about particularly the late queen and princess margaret and how they sort of worked out who would wear what and when and a lot of the sort of machinations that go into that behind the scenes and apparently there is this one time where the queen said to her oh you can't wear it because it's mine and princess margaret said to her if it's yours it's also mine and it's this idea that in the royal collection nothing really like belongs to any one of them individually oh, interesting. they have to kind of work out every time who's going to wear what and what's most appropriate it's not a question of ownership ever it just it just it actually belongs to the nation it doesn't yeah. even belong to the royal family if you are a jewelry fan which i definitely am yeah i really recommend it as a podcast as a whole because there are other great episodes on there like it's a whole episode on first lady jewelry oh, as well and what the first ladies wear to kind of be diplomatic there's a whole episode on bridgerton how they did all oh, the costume jewelry for bridgerton um and jerry hall's on there talking about her like vintage chanel collection oh, from yeah, the 90s like it's real sort of like jewelry porn so yeah. <laughs> highly recommend oh sounds good what about you heather when i was on the podcast last i just started reading the goldfinch so i finished that oh, it was yeah. very good very much enjoyed it 
still think the secret history was I was going to say, better. is it better than the secret history? I was going to say they're very different, but I, I think I enjoyed the secret mm-hmm. history more because there's more of a mystery element. But I yeah. still very much enjoyed How old is the goldfinch now? Because so is she due about... another release? It's been about 10 years. I think <laughs> so. I was thinking this because, yeah, she's done four books and there's always been about 10 years mm. between each of them. So, mm-hmm. yeah, 2013, the goldfinch Ooh, okay. came out. So I'm thinking... Come on, Donna. Bring yeah, us, bring us time, a for another one. <laughs> time for another one. But also, over the weekend, I read Prep by Curtis Sittenfeld. Yes, which is oh the my only god, one I hadn't actually read of her. This has been on my list probably for like ten years. I since. should bring in a copy. I found it in a charity shop for one pound fifty oh, a couple of winning. months ago, oh, wow. knowing romantic comedy was mm-hmm. coming out. So I was like, right, I'll grab it. Because you've read romantic comedy as well, haven't you? Yes, loved that. And I've read uh, Rodham and American Mm -hmm. Wife. I think they're all really good. I've read American Mm -hmm. Wife. So So good. good. So I've lent that to a couple of people recently, actually. Mm -hmm. I feel like everyone's like suddenly on the Curtis Mm -hmm. train, which Mm -hmm. is great. But no, really good. It was her first book. It came out in... I think it came out in 2005 and yeah it's set at a very exclusive boarding school on the east coast of America and it focuses on somebody called Lee who's this 14 year old girl and she's managed to get into the school on scholarship so she feels very much on the back foot mm-hmm. with all the other pupils who are there. Mm-hmm. No one talks about money because nobody needs to buy anything on campus because if you need something you just write it down and your parents pay mm-hmm. the bill so mm-hmm. no one's entirely sure like who's on scholarship, who isn't, but Mm -hmm. you can obviously tell from certain social cues. And yeah, the book just sort of takes you through her four years at the school. And Mm. it's not really that plot driven. It's quite good. It just sort of like, it's just encounters that happen Mm. while she's there and it all sort of accumulates in something. But no, I thought, again, really, Mm. really good. Like like all her writing, she's just got this certain style that's so readable Mm. and you really get into all the characters and you really care about them and they're all flawed. She writes very well, I think. Yeah. Well, just speaking of the coronation, I don't know what your plans are or whether you're hosting a coronation party. We're not. Well... Not yet, anyway. Sometimes we, have, we do have family friends that tend to be a bit last minute with these sort of things, so something might crop up. But I think at the moment the plan is just to try and chill with it a bit and see how much we actually engage because yeah. it's difficult isn't it i remember with the um platinum jubilee being actually quite like overwhelmed <laughs> by the amount of coverage okay. and having to take quite regular breaks but yeah i was writing the tv guide this morning actually and it's like on bbc one and bbc two from seven thirty all the way through till three then there's a bit of a break and then it's back on mm. with the highlights at seven thirty p.m mm. so a lot a lot of coverage yeah. i read <laughs> somewhere that coverage. the military start assembling from like yeah. 6 a.m or something crazy God. like that people are camping out already i saw on no. the friends on the mall to get their spots and oh it's my tuesday goodness. oh my goodness poor things with the That'd weather I know. <laughs> dedication well i've got a list here on how to have the perfect coronation oh, party tellers. are you guys having parties then well i my road has organized a street, a street party, party. Yeah. oh okay because it's quite like a neighborhoody yeah. road and there's loads of kids and yeah that's nice so everyone's kind of pitching in and you know, baking, yeah, all different things. This oh, is awful. Yeah. My street tried to organise one and had two responses. Oh, to no. oh, sad. I, I know. For the Jubilee, I ended up going to one down uh, an oldish street in Elephant and Castle, and it was so fun. Oh, like, good. What a great group of people yeah. who like all really got into the spirit of things. It felt like a proper london affair how does brighton tend to deal with these things then? yeah i haven't seen any uh street party signs anywhere no. but i'm sure there are some places mm. that are i think the thing with my street is it's lots of houses but they're quite a lot of flats mm, so my too yeah and they're quite a lot of students i think there is a community spirit for sure but it's not like a residential road where there's maybe like yeah 10 I also houses. think my road tends to empty at the mm. weekend because mm. it's a yeah. mainly flat so yeah. i think it's a lot of like people who then go yeah. outside of London for the weekends and stuff, so they're exactly. not going to be around. I'm going to be in Cardiff this weekend. Oh. To a friend's house, we sort of, you know, when you're trying to get dating, because there's mm. five of you and it's impossible, mm. we managed to get this weekend in and then suddenly realise that, oh, it's the coronation. Oh, I think it is yeah. I think our friend who's well she was staying with it really isn't that bothered, which is totally <laughs> fine. But I think she's like, oh, right, you're bringing... <laughs> One of my friends like, I bought some glasses with Uni and Jack. Oh, <laughs> I've been sent a sort of Colin the Caterpillar 
cake that's shaped like a corgi yeah. from somewhere. So I'm going to take that along. So. My mum messaged me this morning. She <laughs> sent me a WhatsApp when, the, when I was doing the middle of the sub editing. She's like, don't worry, I've secured a Coronation Colin is what they're called. Oh, no. is that what it is? No, yeah, no, Waitrose are doing Jewel the Jack Russell. That's who I've got. Yeah. I've got that. Down, sort of crushed up in a bag by now. Even though he looks like, like the a corgi. Oh, the, what's yeah. it called? Sorry. The... Coronation Colin. Coronation Colin. Yeah, he's wearing a crown and... Um, it okay. looks quite festive. Lovely. Well, see, we're gonna we're gonna show up with fizz and stuff like that anyway. Whether Al, sorry, Al, we're gonna do it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talk us through the day then. We're, well, we're, it's we're where gonna, it's, what are we it's kind of who you should invite. Like, should you Ooh. invite your neighbours? Mm. I'm not sure. It, I guess that depends where you live. And, I think so. And how well you know community. them? And how well you yeah. know yeah. them? Yeah. What time to start? Because obviously, as we just yeah. said, the coverage is so intense that it's gonna start at like seven. They say the Perfect time to start is three, so you won't get too fatigued with all the, but all the coverage. But doesn't his actual ceremony at like 11, 11 o'clock, I yeah. think? Oh, is it? So okay. maybe that's when he enters the abbey. Yeah. But maybe they're saying like, you watch all the stuff yeah. on TV, oh, okay. and then you, then have, you have a party to celebrate yeah. right after this. Because I think if you're, all, if you're having a party, you're not going to be sitting around the... No, it's distracting. <laughs> Everyone's like, Shh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, there it is. There's, oh, there's Colin. Colin. Coronation, Coronation, Coronation Colin. Colin. Yeah. He yeah, looks he very looks festive, good. I think. He does. Yeah, I'm just about decoration, like, just to go all, like, kitsch, like, royal flags I and like dressing that, up. And... Well, do you know what's dawned on me? Is this might be the last thing we have for a while. Like, we had Kate and Will's wedding. Yeah. Then they all had the kids and the births yeah. were really exciting. Then we had Harry and Meghan. Yeah. And then platinum jubilee yeah. i know closely followed by the queen's yeah. funeral which wasn't like a fun thing but it was obviously lots of pomp and yeah. circumstance and now we've had the coronation and now i feel like we're kind of reaching a point where most of like the kids as such yeah. are married like the next one is going to be george maybe yeah. and it's like that's mm. a while away <laughs> you know in now. terms of like excuses yeah. to throw a knees up it that's might be great. a while till we get to do it again so I was reading a piece in the Times that was basically saying that polling shows that the general British public aren't really that into the really? coronation, but it also showed that mm. we all love a bit of gossip TV watching <laughs> yeah. and kitsch, so we'll probably still all be there, like with That's our interesting. mugs, yeah. and, you know, yeah. getting involved a bit, which I quite liked. That uh, that is just a totally British thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, like really grumpy about it, but get involved. <laughs> yeah. Actually, oh, it's quite fun actually, yeah. wasn't it? And was that an age that was it saying the younger? Not the necessarily, think no. just the general. General British mm. gloominess with a bit of go on then we'll do it. But how's it saying to decorate then? Because I've seen well, it's just saying... artificial mugs and stuff because they used oh, well, to. Yeah, they must do. I think they do them for everything, yeah. don't they? But obviously they're a bit more passe these days. I, I don't know. know. I still feel like almost everyone I know has got a Charles and Diana mug yeah. somewhere, even though <laughs> My mum has Diana stamps. Yeah. Oh, Apparently, right. Yeah, I don't know what for or what occasion <laughs> they issued Diana stamps for, but they're, they're in our safe. Oh, well, don't come <laughs> She's that, like, them. precious about them. She's like, don't touch the Diana stamps. <laughs> no. Any other final tips? Hey, just about the soundtrack. So oh. they're saying to kind of think of cheesy dj wedding vibes <laughs> and, uh, thing? i did see there was an official coronation playlist that was going oh, there really? a couple of weeks ago and the first one was daddy cool is that what he's going to be walking down the aisle to to go that would be yeah. quite funny if it, was. <laughs> it would jazz things up wouldn't it yeah, yeah. but no I can't, I can't see that going right. down well with him harry what have you got for us well, I, th I found this article that was in The Independent, which I thought was quite interesting about Girl Code. And it really stemmed from the, the person who wrote the article, Olivia Petter, was looking at the Olivia Wilde versus Emily Ratajkowski um, sort of cat fight. And I, I use that term deliberately, yeah. not in a derogatory way, in the sense that they... So Olivia Wilde has accused Emily Ratajkowski of breaking Girl Code a couple of weeks ago when she was filmed having a rather enthusiastic make out session with Harry Styles, yes. who, as we all know, went out with Olivia Wilde, even if you're not into pop culture, mm -hmm. I think everyone, everyone knows. Everyone is aware. <laughs> that they went out. Um, I didn't think I knew that they'd broken up, actually. And then I read this piece and they'd broken up in November, but I yeah. don't think I quite appreciated that. Well, I'm surprised you say that, because I do think it was a bit of a a sort of like schism in a sense I mean that makes it sound way too serious but um I think you know lots of people are invested in Harry Styles' love yes. life and obviously their relationship had had its sort of controversies um not least in relation to the fact that you know supposedly it's rumored although pretty much confirmed that on the set of Don't Worry Darling which is where they are supposed to have met yes. 
he was originally seeing Florence Pugh, who was also in, who the, was also film. in the film, mm-hmm. and then the supposed rift between her and Olivia started when she found out that Olivia had also started something with Harry I and see. so on and so forth. And is, is that true? He was with Florence? There was... I. I don't know because I wasn't there, <laughs> but why not? <laughs> I have it on relatively Come good on. authority. The problem yeah. was I don't think Florence and Harry had anything official. Yeah. I think they'd like kissed a couple of times and like, you know how it goes. Yeah, I feel co star. Yeah, or... and I think Florence, like many of us would, would assume that that was like moving in a certain direction. And I think she was pretty blindsided when she, when like Olivia basically announced mm-hmm. to the set that she and Harry were seeing each other from a like point of view of trying to be transparent, and why? she was like. Uh, okay so I think she probably she felt quite humiliated a bit hurt or whatever mm-hmm. and then obviously there were loads loads of accounts weren't there of her and Florence not seeing eye to eye yes. on a lot well, of other yeah, issues and the, on the press tour as well they weren't ever mm. in the same room or anything like that and all that really. stuff about would she go to the Venice Film Festival exactly. and she sort of flew in at the last minute with a glass of Aperol <laughs> yeah, and, it was, and she took her grandma and it was all quite yeah, yeah. all quite weird and then the whole like spitting incident did oh, yeah. that didn't even right. happen did it that no like did it but didn't it um, anyway that so that definitely eclipsed the film itself didn't it the totally <laughs> I mean um don't worry, yeah, don't worry, darling. I feel like it's just been reduced to a meme, sadly, yeah. um, most of the time. Anyway, fast forward six months from all of that drama, and Emily Ratajkowski, who has also had a fairly sort of unpleasant split with her ex-husband, is now photographed, well, videoed in Tokyo, having mm-hmm. a really enthusiastic make-out session with Harry Styles up against <laughs> the side of a bus, which fans went absolutely mental I missed um, all this I don't know how maybe yeah. she's been reading the goldfinch <laughs> I don't know like, I didn't see stick with the goldfinch yeah. this is not where you want to be but it's where I am sadly okay, um, I'm always up for a bit of celeb goth well I think it's because it it spawned this interesting conversation which is Olivia Wilde I don't want to get anyone's um, sort of put words in anyone's mouth but essentially um I think I thought this bit was really interesting actually. She said the internet decided to get very excited about this, the make out sesh. And since the release of those pics, the two women, both of whom have hugely successful careers in their respective fields, have been relentlessly pitted against one another in a toxic waste bin of online discourse, all because Classic. of a boy. Yeah. Which is true. But it says here, unverified sources claimed Wilde felt betrayed by Ratajkowski for breaking girl code for kissing stars. Just wants Emily to keep her name out of her mouth and thinks the model and writer should focus on being a mum. Ouch. Ooh. Yeah. That is nasty comment. But what this uh, columnist is saying is the point is that the conversation has tipped into petulance to the point of parody. Like it's girl counterparts, girl boss, mm. hot girl summer, girl talk. The phrase girl code carries derogatory connotations and is another example of how modern society is obsessed with reducing women to girls, removing their power or autonomy. There's no male equivalent, which also speaks volumes. And I do think that is a really pertinent pertinent point, actually, Mm. isn't it? That we don't talk about blokes, like, breaking boy code. Exactly. I know we do, bro code. She goes on to say, and this is also very important, is that basically, let me find the bit, because she says, oh, (laughs) this is funny, By framing the former in girl code terms as opposed to just being a bit of a dick. Which I think is what blokes would say, wouldn't they? Yeah, that's true. Um, As in, bro code's definitely a thing, isn't it? But I feel like it's not an actual, like, code. (laughs) Yeah. It's like something you can break or it's it's not like this unshakable bond that girl code claims to be. But the author here says, aren't we giving people something else to weaponise against women when that code is broken? And I think that's really important too, isn't it? Which is we can say Emily Ratajkowski's broken girl code and suddenly the entire internet is gunning for her Mm. because like we're hardwired to believe that that's that's a real thing yeah um you know it says here when a breach of girl code becomes a so-called feud that pits two women against one another you have to question who this code is really benefiting spoiler it's not the girls Mm. and I think that's interesting too and then further down she basically says like where is Harry Styles I was gonna say he's just allowed he knows they were friends and he knows they were mates and he knows that he was seeing Florence Pugh before he was seeing Olivia Mm. and all of this stuff and it's the typical typical thing isn't it that we just never give like make the blokes take any kind of accountability in these situations but I don't know have you guys ever come up against girl code or had it 
I don't, I ser- certainly not at the age of 35 anymore. <laughs> I feel like maybe 20 years ago it was a thing. But no, Yeah, maybe like as a now. teenager, like it was a thing. Yeah. Do you believe in it? Do you think it's a thing? It says here that it's toxic and infantilizing and there's no place for it in 2023. I think it's just being a nice part. Like, you know, the girl code, as you say, the term mm. is probably not the best term. But it's just being a decent person that you're not going to snog your best friend's ex-boyfriend yeah it's or interesting ex-husband that... or something yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that kind of goes with that I know yeah. it you think it would it yeah. can work sometimes but generally I think most people know that's probably not a line you cross and no. you don't need to be told if it's, mm. it's what you what you say there thing. about it having more like general kind of subtext though is interesting because yeah. she says a quick straw poll on my social media elicits definitions ranging from not being judgmental mm-hmm. showing empathy Texting when you get home, whatever that means, and agreeing to call with a fake emergency to get someone out of a bad date, <laughs> which I think probably most of us have been asked to do from time to time. For sure. Um, but, but one of the core commandments of girl code, question mark, thou shall not sleep with a friend's ex. I mean, Would there's you? logic to that, isn't there? There is. There? There, there's yeah, logic. That's definitely a thing. Yeah. Is this ever something you guys have encountered? No. no. And I was thinking, <laughs> I kind of, because a lot of my friends are, male anyway so yeah that wouldn't even really work the other way around necessarily maybe that's the mm. answer have more male friends there than we girlfriends. go I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know it's a jo- i think like you were saying it's more a code to live by in general isn't it yeah, yeah. have to be yeah it's it's putting the women fact, against yeah, yeah. exactly other, isn't it? that's the i also think isn't it just a question of like manners at the end of the day like if emily yeah. ratajkowski and harry styles if he'd asked her out not on like a drunken night out in tokyo um, and she had gone to Olivia first and said, exactly. this has happened. Yeah. I think we have a connection, but obviously I know that you're still hurting or whatever. Yeah. How do you feel about it? And if Olivia had, well, what right does Olivia, does Olivia have a right to say to her, I really don't think you should go out with him? I think you can say that, but also know that they don't have to respect your wishes. Mm. You know. And maybe it's just the fact that she's asked yeah. that's, that's enough. Whereas, like, seeing it on the internet with millions of other people in such a graphic way. I think that's the thing, isn't it? When you're a celebrity, you kind of know that these things are going to get picked up by someone somewhere. So maybe there's that element of respect, perhaps. But yeah, are and they also... really best mates or get good friends? Though? Exactly. Or is it I one don't... of these where actually they just know each other or run in the same circles? Yeah. Because I think that, you know. Hmm. I also don't know how like public facing their friendship mm. was or whether that even matters. But I'm just thinking about someone like Taylor Swift and mm. Blake Lively, who everyone knows are yeah. good mates. Like if Taylor, if it was found out that Taylor Swift, who's now single, had gone out with Ryan Reynolds or mm. like he'd left her yeah. for, for Taylor, like I think that would be quite shocking yes but i don't because emily and olivia's friendship if it even existed that yeah. deeply wasn't as public people are sort of more invested now in the cat fight mm. because they're like oh this because was a they're thing calling it a cat fight yeah. as well but also it? it's probably now being their friendship you know now they're probably being you know oh, they were best friends when yeah. actually they probably just knew each other yeah exactly. that social celebrity friends rock. of friends kind yeah. of thing yeah. but it all just comes back to your original point which is that yeah you don't get the same drama in the media yeah. if it was uh two men no it's and no one's even scene. mentioned harry styles in most of the coverage which is just typical but that is what this author's saying i'm not yeah. dragging her yeah, into yeah, that no, sort no. of maelstrom um she has called it out so yeah. good for her no yeah fascinating have you got anything else for us, Emma? I can see a, a handbag. Um, a I've got a very uh, fashion-based one. Oh. It's about our handbags getting bigger and bigger because... All for it. Obviously, <laughs> we had the micro bag trend, which I just did not couldn't get enjoy. On board. Yeah, couldn't get on board. I mean... I remember yeah. Lou saying once on this podcast, we were talking about the Jacquemus, like, yeah, teeny, tiny teeny bag had yeah. just come out. And her perspective of, you know... Someone like Lou, who you think is so practical, wouldn't be like all for it. But she yeah. kind of was, and she was saying that you had to look at it like jewelry, yeah. like accessories, mm. rather than just like something practical yeah. to put yeah. something in. Yeah. It's not going to help you on the way to work, is it? No, no, it's not. It's Could definitely they not. Even fit a phone in though. No, no, I don't. That's the thing. Like, if you could just fit a phone yeah. and a credit card or something, fine. Yeah. yeah. Then that's a bit just like a phone holder, isn't it? Yeah. I do find there are a lot of bags on offer though these days where it's like okay i'll have to keep like my wallet and my phone in there yeah and bit of makeup maybe but then for my laptop and the shoes and like all the other stuff i'm gonna have to take another bag well this is why this trend is a great one it's basically (laughs) 
the the size of your handbag should be like a weekend away bag. Really? Yeah. That's what they're saying. So how, the bigger the better, really. How does that tie in with the whole succession thing? Well, <laughs> they, well I ha- I don't watch succession. Well, I know I'm succession, like the only one, but there is a, a succession reference because in there. Because in the very first episode of the current series... Um, I literally think we talk about this reference on every podcast. Time. We talked about it last yeah, week. Just, well, Emma doesn't know, so I'll explain <laughs> your benefit. Yeah, so someone who's not as posh and rich as everyone else comes in and has... A very capacious bag and one of the characters points out points her out and uh-huh. basically takes the mick saying that you can tell she's not rich because she's got oh, really? a ludicrously yeah. capacious handbag, handbag. Yeah. and i think the cutting line isn't it i said it on the podcast last week was something about what she even got in there yeah. shoes for the subway flip-flops for the subway there we go so but i'm yeah. all for them well the reality is most of us yes have to carry shoes for the subway yeah <laughs> like, yes. how yeah. do you how do you reconcile as a, like someone who works specifically on the fashion team as well like how because what i'm always thinking is like my outfit looks so nice and now i need like a really practical bag to put mm. all my stuff in which isn't going to be like my new fashion bag it's yeah, just yeah. it's just practical mm. so how do you kind of get around making it look stylish or like fit with your outfit or do you not care do you just think just don't think you never have a big enough bag no. so true. and it's you need one with like amazing straps is yeah thing. yeah it's also i had this really nice well, i've still got it but it's a sort of velvety vampire's wife one that i got in a basement sale but because i've chucked my entire life in it <laughs> it's starting the straps are Aww. starting to go so i've stopped using it yeah for work stuff because yeah it was just i'm just gonna break it basically but yeah the structure you're right though the structure is so important yeah so i've got a big black one that i use through the winter but it's so slippery so yeah. it like slips off my shoulder oh, that's all so the annoying. time yeah, so annoying that. That so whereas annoying. now i've got like this canvas one which <laughs> came free with an order from suzanne of all places <laughs> but it's got the like the loveliest sort of like toile de joy print print on it and it's like it's a canvas bag but it's like oblong as opposed to like oh i think this way yeah Yeah. do you know what i mean it's Mm. like sideways and it's so comfortable yeah like i put it on my shoulder and it does not move Mm. and i can literally chuck anything i want in there so useful amazing so they do find you in the most mysterious ways so other than victoria beckham who are the ones jw anderson at loewe they had really big ones um victoria beckham who else um, High Street, it says Arquette have really good ones, mm, and yeah. Uniqlo. Yeah, oh, oh Uniqlo yeah, have well. really nice leather bags. Mm. And yeah. Paul's actually yeah. do that quite well mm. as well. Yeah. So you just need to check the straps and make yeah. sure you can uh, wear Yeah, and that it doesn't like dig into your oh, arm. Yeah. yeah, all of the above. Yeah. And that they're waterproof is the other yes, thing. Yes, my canvas bag thing. is going to be rubbish in the rain, but yeah. hopefully today it's not forecast. But yeah. yeah, if it had been chucking it down this morning, I'd have had to. Exactly. Use my black leather one, which is useless. Right here, let's do a couple of quick fire questions. So, okay, somebody has said, how to switch up your look if you're not feeling great, hair slash makeup. Ooh. Anyone got any tips? That's quite a difficult one. Hmm. I would say start with makeup before you do anything drastic to your hair. Yeah, that's probably very good advice. Um, and I think... Instagram is the best source of inspiration for this and just follow I mean we've got loads of recommendations on the site mm. of like makeup artists to kind of follow but also follow the brands this is yeah. what I think mm. people don't always do these days is like follow the Chanel's and the Dior's of this world because they also have like their resident artists who yeah. are constantly putting out looks um, and just see what takes your fancy if you want to try something new because the thing with makeup is you can give it a go at home and if you mm. don't like it you just wash it off I yeah. think lip colour is quite a good yeah. Yeah. Quite easy quick yeah. one to do yeah sure. um and maybe, you know, eyeliner. Like, yeah. if you're not used to wearing eyeliner, because that can really change a person. For sure. Mm-hmm. I think, but... especially now, more people are hybrid working mm-hmm. as well. It's something you could do at home. Yeah, to get used to it yourself, yeah. can't you? Before you maybe, like, stroll into the office. And yeah. yeah, but like, I agree, oh, I don't that? change your hair. You know, I wouldn't do that break. first. Yeah. I mean, it might be that, you know, once you've found a new makeup look, you, you think the hair is now wrong. Exactly. But that might give you more of a jumping off point to feel more confident about exactly. a decision. And mm-hmm. Becky always says, actually, that she feels um we do loads of like directory lists on the site of hair salons where you can go in and have just like a chat with them first before doing anything drastic and i think people have to feel more confident about 
doing that. I think sometimes they feel like they have to go to a salon with like a preconceived idea of what they want. Oh uh, yeah, if, not if, true. If they're good, then they should yeah. be able to. Do. I've just got some like tiny extra bits here. That, Cut shorter. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nothing. Nothing major, mm-hmm. but yeah, just something that no one has noticed, but I know it's yeah. there. Yeah. Like right, that looks slightly different than it yeah. was before. So like you say, yeah. I think yeah. George Northwood calls them like micro trims or something. Yeah, they just where, don't. Like to the naked yeah. eye, they're maybe not discernible, but to exactly. you, they can feel quite fresh. Or yeah, whatever. and it feels mm-hmm. nice. I also just think from like a maintenance point of view like a gloss or a conditioning treatment oh, can yeah. make you just feel a bit better yeah, that's true, actually. Oh, wait, it doesn't gloss, have to be like yeah. a big cut or a big color it can just be something yeah. to make you feel a bit better no, that's a good tip yeah i do a gloss every couple of weeks mm, so yeah still, they only last like 10 washes and because i wash my hair every day they don't last but those mm. first couple of days i'm like oh yeah yeah it's, it's like a reset better. isn't it exactly okay this is good for me to know as well because I've sort of sorted the moth problem, everyone. Oh. But I've now got to actually sort all my clothes out. <laughs> um, how should you decide what clothes to keep when you're doing a wardrobe sort out in case the trend comes back? Emma, any advice? Well, the main thing I, is when was the last time you wore it? I mm-hmm. mean, I know the trend might come back, but I just don't think you can do a wardrobe cleanse with that in mind yeah. because if you haven't reached for that item or if you haven't worn it or if you haven't enjoyed wearing it recently I think that's the, the sign that it should go but I also think do you agree with me Emma that when things come back around they tend to come back around in a slightly yeah, different they're way always slightly different. there's always a way where like they've made it more modern exactly. or more contemporary so it's and very rare like you're wearing the, stuff the old the one and yeah. like a cool way so yeah like, I always think a great example of that is the leather biker jacket mm-hmm. so like 10 years ago it was quite fitted and yeah, lots yeah. of zips top shop and... really cropped yes, yeah. Yeah. very Kate Moss 2005 yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. Um, and the biker has come back but it's you know it's a lot looser and it's yeah. like heavier and so yeah so it's all it's always a, a bit different uh, that's a yeah. Really, yeah that's good so basically only keep it if you love it and you keep wearing it and if you haven't worn it for a while chances yeah are, like, i yeah. think like trend-led things yeah. you know they're quite difficult to just keep in your wardrobe yeah. over time so just in case yeah yeah Make so, some space for something new. Keep the nice classics. I, I was going to say, make yeah. space for classics mm-hmm. right, yeah. that aren't trend-driven, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then you won't have to keep going with yeah. stuff, hopefully. Great advice. Best tips on how to make small talk? Ooh, I feel really passionately about small talk, because I, I feel like talk. I'm quite good at it. Yeah. Um, but I think it obviously comes from my job, which yeah. is when I was really like just starting out and I was like 23 and fresh out of uni and I my first journalism job it was like very events driven mm-hmm. and I had to go to things I was probably out like four or five nights a yeah, week sounds like my first yeah job. I think yeah. quite a lot of young like yeah. reporter jobs are like this and um and so I was like forced into that mm-hmm. environment very quickly but I think you basically the thing that held like stood me in good stead was having like a working knowledge of what was going on in the news mm-hmm. you don't have to know anything in detail and I think this is where people fall down is they think they have to be an expert on everything yeah. and go into situations where it's like, oh, I know everything about this. Um, and they never know what's coming and then yeah. they get all flustered. But I actually think if you just have like a working knowledge, mm-hmm. like think you're going on, have I got news for you or something? Yeah. And then you can get somewhere. And if someone's like, oh, well, did you read this about that? You can say like, oh, no, tell me. Yeah, like, yeah. It's just a conversation. What, and then ask yeah. them the question back. Like, yeah, tell I, me what I they said. I think that's such good advice. I think especially when you're younger, perhaps, um, it's tempting to just agree with what people are saying or like they're like, oh, have mm. you heard this? Did you know this? It's very easy mm. to just nod along to try and be part of something. But actually, there's nothing wrong with Say, oh, oh no, no, I don't tell yeah. me about yeah. it. Or ask, then you've got questions to ask mm-hmm. other people. Yeah, there. And I think advice. as journalists, we're probably well aware that there's very few things people enjoy more in life than talking about themselves. That's a good point. So mm-hmm. I think if you're ever stuck or you think, oh God, what I'm telling him, he's just not responding mm-hmm. to or her or whatever just like say so where do you live like yeah. and then you're off into a whole thing how long have you lived there do you have kids exactly. where do they go to school like all you know there's a thousand questions out there so if you're worried that the news stuff is letting you down and people just start yeah. engaging i would just say just ask them personal questions within reason exactly and i also think that if if you can sense that you're maybe just like the spanish inquisition they're not really yeah. giving you back mm. Or just say you're living to the loo. Yeah, and yeah. And like find another. Yeah, try and change the vibe. Yeah. Because you will get that as well sometimes. I don't think it's very confidence boosting, especially when you're a bit younger. Not mm. everyone will sort of give you the time give you of day. Back. So yeah. if you're not really getting anything back, I think yeah. it's okay to, to move on. Especially yeah. if you're at a party or something. Exactly. I feel like in a work situation as well, the really like key thing to remember is if you're all sat around one of those quite formal tables. Yeah. It's like everyone's in the same position. Yeah. Like, and probably people are seated next to people they don't know. Yeah. So 
don't worry about that being like everyone knows each other and I I know no one because exactly. most of the events I went to as a young journal no one knew anyone or had met even exactly. before me mm. exactly yeah. Emma any words of wisdom to add mm, oh I would say just like be yourself like yeah. don't try and be you know no as you were saying everything on the news mm. or and just speak about what you like to speak about yeah. and what you have knowledge of yeah and just yeah just be smile yourself. and be friendly yeah. I think mm. that can get you a long way and I think if you're if you're like that, you can mm. fake it then, can't you? Just mm. so you're happy and yeah. confident and then it's all fine and no one will know. <laughs> and then finally, someone has said, have you got any good 2023 long weekend ideas? Older needs one of mine. That's but... <laughs> yeah, that's a good, good one. Norfolk. <laughs> Norfolk. Yeah, any others we haven't discussed recently? I mean, I'm always a big proponent of Lake District. Yep. I think there's so oh, much yeah. to do up there. It is a bit of a longer journey. Mm. Um but, you know, it doesn't involve a flight, so there is that. And there's loads, like, you could go there as a couple for a romantic yeah. weekend. You could go there as a family. Yeah. You could Young almost friends. go there as a solo traveller. Yeah. Like, I do think it's one of those places that works for everyone. Yes, the weather's a bit iffy, but um, as is most of the Welcome coast of the UK. UK. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, there's something there for most budgets, mm, I think, I is agree. a good point. Um, in the sense that there are some really luxe hotels and some very like standard ones um and then there's all sorts of activities or yeah. there's just you know you can go walking um there's also a good balance of like culture and not culture yeah so you can do museums or not um and the food's really good yeah mm. yeah i think that's a good shout so yeah i think yeah it has to be staycation for three days really yeah. doesn't it yeah. yeah i think if you are getting on a flight I, th- I mean, people day, do it, yeah, but, but I think you just have to, yeah, it depends yeah. What, what you want to sort of maximise out of it. That's the thing, I think if you love a sort of run around for 48 hours mm. discovering a new city, then yeah, there are so many great ones in Europe, aren't yeah. there? Mm. But I think, yeah, if you're just, sometimes it's nice just to go somewhere and there's not too much to do, yeah. so you can just really get And to also with somewhere. flights and stuff, I feel like there just is that added layer of anxiety of like, yeah. if the Eurostar's on strike, if the airport like goes into mm. meltdown then you lose quite a lot of that yeah, weekend you, time. Sure. Whereas if you're in control driving somewhere, exactly. you can kind of yeah. have a bit more, mm. a bit more time. So look to Kent. There's obviously there's Deal, which is amazing. Mm. There's Margate. Mm. And Sherry Sussex. went to Rye. There's last Rye and Hastings well. and East Sussex. Yeah. yeah, there's loads of lovely places that are really mm-hmm. easy to get to. Yeah. Liverpool. I know it's on our minds at the moment. Yes. But Sherry's just done a pocket guide to Liverpool ahead of Eurovision, Eurovision. next weekend. Yeah. So yeah, there's. I don't know. I think people forget that sometimes forget that the UK has got so many amazing mm. cities you could mm. easily go to any of them for a yeah, long weekend. Yeah, Sherry went to York and Edinburgh. York, yeah, like Edinburgh's Edinburgh's amazing, well. Manchester, mm, Leeds yeah. is incredible. Like If Bristol. it's below the budget, Charlotte just went to Glen Eagles. Exactly. I know she really loved it. Mm. But there's, yeah, Glasgow's fab. Like, yeah, there yeah. are just so many. If you're willing to hop on a train for a few hours, mm. I think there are so many amazing places go visit we're very lucky yeah very lucky great i think that's all we've got time for thanks both if you enjoy that please do rate review subscribe and tell your friends and if you've got any questions for us please do email us at podcast actually like we love hearing from you and we will see you next time thank you goodbye